Okay, so jumping into the meat, yeah, we will go ahead and make a threaded hello world. And so we start off, pull in STD thread. STD thread is the most basic um, interface to talking to threads in Rust. It's been in Rust since before 1.0. Um, it is an almost exact mirror over your operating system's thread system. So we call thread spawn. What that does is it launches up with, um, your operating system thread system, creates the thread, passes it. This is a closure inline function. You can also pass it a function name with no parameters. And we're just going to print hello thread, print hello world um, outside of the thread. And then we're joining. And what joining means is um, <clears throat> when a thread returns, its join handle will stop blocking. So you can wait on the thread to join. Be sure that the thread is executed. If you forgot to join, it may or may not print hello thread. It will always print hello world. Um, joining makes sure that that thread is completed before the main program completes. And they expect something went horribly wrong. Usually uh, join handles won't give you an error result. So you usually see them unwrapped or expected, but it, <clears throat> there are times that it can. So this is relatively straightforward in the three lines of code. You've created a thread, done something, waited on the thread. It's uh, about as simple as it gets. So let's start to talk about different ways, different approaches to threading. So we looked at STD thread. It is the most basic thread creation system. Okay, so the upside of STD thread, straightforward, pretty um, pretty foolproof because you've just got the one command, one simple command. It's ideal when you want to make a thread and have it do something independently. Um, there's also a compli com slightly convoluted thread builder system that you can use if you start to need to, cu to customize how much stack it allocates. Um, much to my surprise, basic Rust did not have priority and CPU affinity built in. There are crates for that. Um, the reason for that turned out to be that they're so different between platforms and not every platform even has those concepts. It couldn't be in the standard library and have the standard library still be uh, cross-platform. So let's look at the big downside of that. Um, capturing scope with regular STD thread can be painful and can be really confusing to the newcomer to Rust. Yeah, so this is a very similar program to the uh, Go one we talked about. It's not quite the same thing, but we create a mutable counter. Uh, mute means mutable. It also means compile time mutex, which we'll talk about in a second. We create a vector of handles, uh, the uh, join handles we talked about. Uh, when, we, when you call dot join, uh, the handle that you wait on is called a join handle. We make eight threads. We push each thread. So we push each thread and we go into each thread, uh, push the join handle for each thread, spawn it, count to a million, increment the counter. So this is a lot like the Go code, except you know we've just got eight threads instead, instead of 100 of them. And down at the bottom, we're doing handles. I used into iter as opposed to iter. The only difference there is that it consumes the iterator going through because we're never going to use it again. So this will not compile at all. And the reason it won't compile is that uh, the error message will even tell you. It tells you uh, that you are attempting to access the moved, um, sorry, you are attempting to access the already mutably shared counter. That's the data race protection kicking in right there. That's the borrow checker. And so this is the same example we use, I used in the previous webinar. Your um, Rule, your Rust rules with the MUT keyword mute are quite simple. You can either have um, as many um, immutable read only accesses to a variable at the same time as you want, or exactly one mutable reference. So it, you are not allowed to compile code in which um, more than one part of the program at a time might be changing a variable. It simply won't compile. This is what you will see when you when you try and make a race condition. So we uh, solve that by using an atomic. That sounds sounds good, right? That's what we always um, always say in classes. What I told you in the last one. And so this is the same program, but I've replaced counter with an atomic. You'll notice it's no longer mutable. 
even though we're trying to, we're going to be mutating it. We're going to talk about that in interior mutability. Um, the, uh, we still make the vector, we still make the spawns, we call counter fetch add. And now we get a truly bizarre error message. Function requires argument type to outlive static. It then even suggests adding the move function, which is really bizarre because you'd be moving your ownership of your atomic to one of the threads and then the next threads won't work. So what on earth is going on here? Now, the problem is that SDD thread has no way of knowing if the thread is going to complete before the main function. Yep, we've got a join there, but the compiler isn't sure, isn't, cannot be 100% sure that something won't go wrong. Join is fallible. And this is this caused all manner of issues when Rust appeared when Rust first came came out. It's like, how on earth do I have a local variable, access it in a bunch of threads, work with it? And the answer is um, they added scope threads to make this easier because solving the halting problem is uh, extremely hard. It's almost it's practically impossible um, in a full complete language to prove that. Um, different parts of the program will ever terminate and will ever terminate in the right order. And depending on the operating system you're on, sometimes um, a child thread may end moments after the main thread. So technically, you know, Rust is technically correct here um, in the sense that uh, you might, for just a very brief moment, try and access some data that isn't valid anymore. In practice, it's not really a problem, but, as, but Rust is doing its very best to help you. Arguably, it's trying a little too hard to help you. OK, so we use a static variable. You'll see this in a lot of the early Rust around 1.0. Uh, static variable is initialized before main runs, always deinitialized at the very end of the program. So now the compiler is happy because your static variable will outlive um, your code. And once again, we're technically correct, and this will give the right answer. But static variables become a problem when you start having static variables in functions, calling the function over and over again, because the lifetime of the static variable and the invocation of the function are not always the same. So this won't give you the results you expect when you're starting to write um, when you're starting to write complicated programs. So this works, but it's not really the right answer. Now, the for this particular problem, the best option is to make use of the join handle. Because join handles are not just for waiting for the end. You can return a value from a thread, and the join handle receives that value. So now we find my mouse cursor. We create a local variable, local to the thread. It's created inside the thread. It's not shared. We increment the counter. We return the counter. And so when we um, join, we can take those values, add them up. Downside here is we've added eight additional additions to our program. Upside is we've made our program a lot simpler. And most of the time, um, combining the results at the end isn't going to kill you performance-wise. But the up huge upside for me is that your program is now a lot more readable. It's not relying on static variables, which are effectively global variables. You have something nice contained, but it's still not the best way to approach this particular problem. We'll look at that in a moment.